Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. For a few minutes this morning, I'm going to be sharing on stewardship of life and time. Look at anybody and say, stewardship of life and time. Stewardship of life and time. Father, thank you because we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of every writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Stewardship of our life and time. You can have your sitting God's spread. Stewardship of our life and time. Stewardship of our life and time. All right. Let me start by saying that God loves us and trusts us so much that he has committed into our hands a resource that is important, a treasure that is great, a resource that is important. Can I say that to you again? God loves you so much and God trusts you so much that he has entrusted into your hand a resource that is important, a treasure that is great, something you cannot, and without you, that thing will not work well. Can I say that what I said again? Because it's important. I said God loves you so much and trusts you so much that he has entrusted into your hand, not my hand, into your hand, every one of us, into our hand, something that is very key, something that is very important, something that is very, very awesome. And that is the resource that is one of the most important resources in this world. And that is the resource of your life. God has committed the management of that resource into your hand and is the management of your life. He trusts you so much that even your life is not in his hands. That the management of your life is in your hands. Can I say that to you again? Because some people pray and make it look like it is God that keeps life. I am telling you that God has made you the manager of your life. Let me start by sharing a story with you so that you will get what I'm saying. Let me start by sharing a story with you. I was in 100 level in the year 2005. And I had a friend who was in my class. I won't mention his name, but they were ballers. I mean, they were rich. He came to school, he would always come to school with under accord. That is, was his own car, an under accord. In 2005, an under accord was like having a Benz now, right? He was driving an under accord. And on some occasion, he brings Jeep to school. I mean, he was a baller. Now, they had so much money that they could afford to go to club in Ibadan. You know, I was schooling in Loring. They go every weekend in Ibadan, or they go to Bomashore just to club. Now, he had a junior brother. There were only two boys that the father gave back. He had a junior brother. And you see this guy, this is junior brother, went out one day and to a party on a Friday. And he drank, drank, drank. And eventually around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., they decided to go to a pool. And they went to a pool. And he was in the pool. And then he drowned. Unfortunately, nobody knew. They thought he, had, he was with a girl or something. So when the guys were ready to return to Ilori in the morning, they couldn't find him and they started looking for him. Eventually, they looked everywhere and someone found him dead in the pool. That is what you call a wasted life. You call it wasted because he is the manager of the life. So the way he used it, he didn't use it well. So he wasted his life. Somebody following him. So that when some people drive, the way they drive and they have an accident, you cannot say it is the devil or God. They wasted their life. Why? Because they are stewards of their life. Now, let me say this to you, that no matter where you are and no matter who you are, there is a thing that is a leveler. It is called life and time. 
The rich does not have it more than you do. The poor does not have it more than you do. Um, whether they are Binos, whether they are um, Caucasians, black, whatever color, skin color they have, all of us have 24 hours. And all of us have life. So life and time is what? Is a leveler. So I'm talking about life and time. I've discovered that what we call life is an aggregation of our time. What you call life is an aggregation of your time. What you do with your time becomes your life. Oh, I'm a medical doctor. is because sometimes in your past, you actually study in your past what you did with your time. If you don't like your life, change what you do with your time. Can I say that somebody again? If you don't like your life, change what you do with your time. We all are victims of our time use. We make decisions about how we use our time, but eventually we face our life because our life has become the result of our time. So all of us seated here are victims of our time. So help me preach that message. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a victim? No, no, you're not saying it. Well, it won't slap you. All things being equal. <laughs> right? So look at that person and say, you are a victim of your time use. So today is as a result of how you use your time yesterday. Somebody say, this man is saying there's no devil. Wait. You see, in the portion of scriptures we read, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 16, we read some things that Paul said that are quite simple, but they are very powerful. And I want to say four things out of that same verse. You've read that, that verse again and again, but there are four key things there. Number one, Paul said, be careful how you live. Number one, be careful how you live. You see, that word, be careful how you live, just in one bit, knock off that word we say, and say, she beats my life. I can do whatever I want to do with it. Now, Paul said, you can't do that. Be careful how you live. Paul said, be careful how you live your life. You can't say, it's my life. I'll do what I want with it. No, sir. No, ma'am. It is not your life. You are only a steward. You remember that definition of steward? Somebody who manages on somebody else's behalf. But God has given you the management of your life. So that it is not the devil most times. It is mismanagement. Number two, Paul said, live wisely. The word wisely actually means three key words. Number one, live with knowledge. Live based on experience, number two. And number three, live based on sound judgment. Experience. That's why I tell people, I can tell how your life will work by, by even when I see the course you study in school. <laughs> if you study like I did geography, or you did a course like uh, plant biology, or you did zoology. Now, when you finish school, if you don't go and learn a skill, I don't know how many zoo, because you have discovered that the people who are working in zoo in 2000 were the same guys working there in 1990. So they will employ more people. So where are you going to work? So you can see that your life is clear. Your life is clear. So you, if you live wisely, you can get out and not take yourself. You know, when we are in school, even those who are reading courses that are not good, their lecturers tell them that don't worry, you can work everywhere. I, 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 there are people here who read those courses and they, they get there, ah, you can work anywhere. And I mean, after okay, I, I know many of us in this church are engineers and all of that. You didn't have to be told that. But anybody who did singular courses who know what I'm talking about, you did chemistry, all those. I say, ah, don't worry, you can work anywhere. You have graduated now, you see that there's no working anywhere. To live wisely now means to look at your life and based on sound judgment. Without you deceiving yourself, ask yourself, what are my options and my choices? That's what Paul was saying. Number three, he said, maximize the opportunity that every day carries. Every day comes with overall opportunities. Dressed with opportunities. Every day, you must maximize what it carries. You will not have better opportunities tomorrow than you have today. What you do with today will determine what you do tomorrow. Number what you become tomorrow. And then number four, Paul said, don't act thoughtlessly. Have you seen people act? And you say, ah, sir, you did not think at all, sir. You, you didn't think about it at all. Paul said, when it comes to your life, don't act thoughtlessly. I remember I was with some young guys. And they were saying, I could do the Obama Shoy Lorry Road in 15 minutes. Ah, that's what they said. 
15 minutes. Now that's an average, that's, that's a journey, that's an area covering about 120 kilometers there about 100 kilometers. And boys were saying they were going to do it in 15 minutes. And that means they are going to run maybe 160 kilometers per hour. Now, listen, if you are in that kind of a car and you are fine, that is acting thoughtless. There's no need of demon. You are the demon. Because you see, people say, ah, but you know, those, those cars are built for speed. Have you heard that before? The Benz is built for speed. Where they tested Benz was is in Germany. You can go in Germany for millions of kilometers without a portal. They don't test for speed in Nigeria. Because you see it, it is going where? Suddenly. <laughs> you will see something that can even take a complete car. So you cannot afford to act thoughtless. Listen to this. It's a disaster to spend most of our time and in extension our life living for something different from God's purpose for our lives. It's a disaster. To live for something else. To live for something different from God's purpose and plan for your life. Today I want to speak about live and time stewardship. And so let's start again. You know, I start many times and it helps me to also close many times. Glory to God. All right, so let's start by looking at what is the definition of life stewardship. When we say stewardship of your life, what is that definition? It is the careful, life to worship is the careful and responsible management of your life. Do you like that? Do you get that? Careful and responsible management of your life. Many people are careless with their life. The way you live, I can tell that you are careless with your life. I don't need nobody telling me. I can tell. I can tell. You take one pack of Alandia you got, you finish it with a bowl of rice. Or if you are from Ekitianondo, you finish it with a bowl of Pandediam. Look at how much calorie you put in yourself. And you know what you do eventually? You are tired and you sleep immediately. Your organs cannot even process that kind of sugar. So you wake up and you say, ah, it's the devil. Loaded. You see, when you sleep like that, the kind of dreams you will have will tell you that your heart and your mind is not in a place of rest. Why? The careful and responsible. I'm very careful with my life. People drive me in the city. I don't think anybody have ever driven me. I think only one person has ever driven me on a journey. Why? Because I am careful and responsible for my life. Young boys who don't have children, there's a way they drive. When you are married, there's a way you drive. Now, when you have kids, there's a way you drive. Responsible. Careful and responsible. I've seen people who now are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Is somebody following me? Believing God for the fruit of the womb. You know why? They had carelessly lived their life while they were single. So abortions are followed and something has affected. That is a careless and irresponsible management of life. After this sermon, you will probably not be smiling with me again. But it is okay. The word of God is what? It's for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be powerful, thoroughly funny, unto every good work. So let's continue here, people. Listen. Okay, so I want to say this. You have time to probably try again. You know, have you failed an exam before? And then you tried again. Do you know that you don't have a life to try again? All those abiku they are talking about it's a lie. If you die here, you have died. It's only in movies that people reappear. But you see, if you die alive, you, it, there's, so it's not a life on trial. It's, they don't test it. This is life. You have only one. And you're responsible for the management of it. You, 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 you can have time to do it again. But you don't have life to do it again. So what is time stewardship? I, you know, before I define time stewardship, let me say this to you that whether you use time or you don't use it, time will go. Have you discovered that? Time does not wait. Whether I'm, I'm ready or I'm not ready, it is going. Whether you are inactive or active, it is going. So whatever you do with time does not matter. Time does not send you. It goes. Whether you appreciate it or not, it goes. So when somebody, I remember I was counseling a young lady. She said, I'm 30 now. I, I, 
only but you are not just 30. Time had been going. A young man looked at me. I said, my plan was to get married at 30. At, at 32. Oh, where you? When you are older, I said 39. See, time, time. It was not, it, it won't wait. I thought that, you see, when you plan to do something, you can force it. Later. That is true. You must marry. I want to marry 32. Now, it's not 32 years old. Time, force. Or you can see you can't pause. Nobody pauses time. Because he goes, he doesn't send you. If there's something that does not send you, you know, people talk about that guy does not send me. If there's something that does not send you in this world, it's time. I want you to leave this church understanding that time does not send you. Whether you sleep throughout 2023 or not, it won't stop. Somebody say, let's cancel the year of COVID. Do you know we talk about that? That that year does not even exist. Was it 2002 and... 2020, say, ah, let's cancel it. I, I mean, I don't even count that. You know your age counted that. Whether you count it or not, your age counted that. Right? Time, still worship. What is time, still worship? It is the careful. Time, still worship is the careful. Wise and godly use of time God gives us. Is the careful, godly, and wise use of time that God has given you. Somebody say, God did not give me time. I said, the time is just there. People are on the hospital bed. Time is very slow. It doesn't even exist. That you are alive and well, time exists. So we all have 24 hours. Can I have the board, please? We all have 24 hours. And 24 hours is going to keep going in spite and despite of you. Right. Can you see this? Old people in the church, I want to apologize in advance. Give me the... Can you see this? This handwriting has gone to Harvard. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, I think it should be... Is it there? Check the slide. I think it should be there. Now, how do you feel the time? And how do you feel your time? If you look at the board, these are things that people do with their time. Every one of us. Every one of us. So how do you feel your time? Number one, you do church, or other Christian activities. So put this in your notes. We want to do something very practical now. Put this down. Number one, church and other Christian activity. Just write it. We're going to do something very practical. You know, I told you, still worship of time. When we get to still worship of money too, you will draw it. You will see it by yourself. After calculation, ah, that you have been fair to yourself. Understand that too. Look at that. What do you do? Church and other Christian activities. Have you put that as number one? Number two? Are you keeping that, man? Number two? Employment and work. That's the other thing we do, right? We work. Abby? Number three? Friends and family. See that? I even included uh, cleaning and uh, and laundry and housework. You see that? So, go to the next slide. I'll go to the next slide, but if you can keep this, you can just write it. Everything is here. Clean and also, and then another time you minister to others, are just canceling people, just helping people. You, you do that also, right? Um, just praying for other people. And then there's that time where you spend time with God. That's your prayer and reading God's word. Put that down very quickly. Put that down. You also do recreation. You do workout, you do gym. For those of us who go to gym, glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of us just walk. Take a walk. Glory to God. Some people don't even want to hear gym. It's not spiritual. It's not a spiritual thing. Amen. And then some people rest and sleep. Sleep time is important. You stand up, sleep. And then there's social media and time online. I cover, if, if you have anything I do not cover, you can raise your hand. I will. I, I, I try to cover everything. All right? So, social media and time online. Social media. Somebody said, you're doing my job with social media. Glory to God. And then, you're studying and self-improvement. You might be a student. That's learning, right? So, that's, that's time. Okay. And then, finally, entertainment. That's where you have Netflix, Amazon Prime, DSTV, Showmax, Pro, all of those, football. Glory to God. Entertainment. TV, video games. Nintendo, uh, PES, PlayStation, 
All right, so you've done that very quickly. I don't want to keep too much time. All right. Over 24 hours. Over 24 hours. I want you to fix the time on an average per week in 24 hours. How many minutes do you use this for? Put it there. Fill it. Now, you don't look at me again. This is the time where you look at your book and your notes and fill. Do the filling now. You came to church. Somebody said, I should not have come. I will seize your phone. And I'll seize it and we'll smile. Glory to God. Amen. Are you done? Somebody's looking up. There's not to look up. You look inside. <laughs> Somebody's looking at Why are you looking at me? I, we don't spend the time together. Glory to God. And if you do fake for me, I'll call you out to come and say it to the church. Amen. And God can lead me to anybody. Amen. Glory to God. This is school. This is stewardship school. Stewardship school of growth. Amen. You see that? This is fine name. It's SSG. Stewardship school of growth. <laughs> All right. So how many hours? How many hours employment? You do it. You do a nine to five. That's like eight hours, right? Um, friends and family, just gisting, keeping fine time with family. One hour, two hours. All right. If you are single, you don't even have that time at all. Don't send them self. You call them maybe twenty minutes in one week. <laughs> so put that down. Twenty four hours, twenty minutes in one week will become like um, how many minutes? In That's like three minutes. All right. You look at um laundry cleaning. Look at ministry to others. Look at prayer, reading God's word, recreation. What do you do with that time? Rest, sleep. What do you do? Social media. Uh, what do you do with that time? Uh, study, self improvement, learning, and other TV entertainment. What do you do? Are you done? Now look at that. Look at that. Look at it very deeply. Wow. Wow. It's on the screen, it's everywhere. An average, should I, should I ask somebody to come and, that would be very bad if I ask some people to come and, if Desmond should look at his sleeping, his sleeping might be three hours because he's very busy, he works hard. If we look at some people's employment, it's like 12 hours and they are paying you 30,000. You can see that you don't have a job. Can you see that? You see by the look of time. If you are a slave, you are not a worker. <laughs> All right, so you look at laundry. Look at music to order. Some of us, is 10 minutes you put at reading Bible, you see? And prayer is 10 minutes. Some people don't even have minutes. You've done that. You can see that the devil is not that powerful. Men are their own enemies is the misappropriation and an abuse of our time and our lives that makes us to have the kind of life that we have. And later we face the devil or God and say it's his fault. Many people who are called of God don't even have family time. And so their marriage suffer. They raise children that don't want to follow God. That's why you see many pastors, they say, they don't, I don't want to do the church. I don't want to do church. That's because daddy never stayed at home. And daddy never called them. That is spent time canceling and measure to order. He didn't mean start his own family. Can you see? That's why many doctors, that's what happened. They don't have time. Is it that they are sleeping or they are operating? Glory to God. Now, how do I know that you are misusing your time? Lack of energy. You are always tired. I'll just run through this. You are always tired. Lack of energy. Number two, no clear life goals or objective. What will be, will be. You know, we say that thing. Where to go be, go be. I don't kill myself. What will be will be? You are not living for anything. You are just hanging in there. Hello? All right. People are in church. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is the worship of life and time. Okay? Number three, impatience and frustration. You are always in a hurry. It's a sign of misuse of time. Always in a hurry. Always in a hurry. You ask, ah, I can't wait. Ah, you are always in a hurry. It shows. You, number four, you frequently miss deadlines and you keep leaving important things undone. That tells you that you are not a good steward of time. You neglect your health. You neglect your health. You walk yourself out, burning the candle on two edges. People say it is not good. For a man to sleep late and wake up early, 
and yet eat the bread of sorrow. That's what scripture says. Are you following me? How do I know you are a bad steward of time? When you say yes to everything and you don't say no at all. Ah! We are traveling tomorrow. Are you available? Ah! What are we doing? What are... Everything. Somebody say, I need your help. You are there. Now, when you cannot say no, it tells me three things. Number one, it means you don't have values. Number two, it means you don't have discipline. Number three, you don't have safeguards. You don't have value, you don't have discipline, and you don't have safeguards. And that's the reason you don't have time to do other things because you have you have worn yourself out on many things that are not necessary. Number the next one, when you are always tired and irritable, it means you are a bad steward of time and life. Number eight, when you keep neglecting God. I know I should, I should, I'm supposed to follow God. If I know God has called me, but there's no time. There's no, there's no time. You see, that tells me something. Listen, an important truth here about time and life is that we will always have limited time. An important truth is that life is short and uncertain. Whether you live for 90 years, when compared to eternity, it is short. As you grow older, you will discover, like I discover, that life is short. Ah, ah, I remember when I was 30, they were designing. doing. I know them, I know they were designing, putting my flyer out there. Ah, I'm 30 now. Today, I am looking at 40 like this. And I'm saying, where did they go? You know, when you are 12, you want to quickly be 18. At that time, time is slow. I assure you, the moment you get to that time, they call 29. Time goes on a Jaguar. It just keeps running. So, time is uncertain. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, He has made everything beautiful in its time. That tells you that time is specific. Time. No one I know would argue that life is brief. Life is very brief. Psalm 39, 4 to 5, the Bible says, Show me, Lord. My life's end and the number of my days Let me know how fleeting my life is. You see, the way you live, you live like, I'm going to be here forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. I remember there's a king in a, in a town, in a, in, in a king, that, that, and a laughing that was there for a long time. A laughing eventually went to his creator. You see, no matter how old you are, life is ephemeral. That's why the psalmist says in 1912, they teach us to number our days that we may have a heart even of wisdom. James chapter 4 verse 14. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little and then vanishes. You see, because life is a resource that vanishes. Time is a resource that vanishes. That's why you need to manage it. That's why you need to manage it. That's why I want to talk about the management of your life and time. Now, now, quickly, I want to now start running. Because, you see, you've done this now. You've seen how your life looks like. Somebody say, Jesus, what, what have I been doing? You look at 24 hours, you see that it's so lopsided. Your rest time does not even exist. You look at that, you see that there's no prayer and reading of God's word. It's a, it's a avasad. Because according to you, you are looking for money. You see that? It's clear. You spend eight hours on the workplace, in your workplace. And you spend four hours in traffic to go and to come back and to hit the bread of sorrow. I know what I mean by that. They pay you 25,000, 30,000. That's not a joke. You can see that now. That even somebody should sit down and be learning how to sow and sowing from your house. Even if it's one deed that comes in a month, you may make more money than that. So you see that you can look at your life and say, no, this is not working. This is working. Somebody look at their movie life. Or your football life, or your video games. Can you see? Somebody say, I don't play video games, I play it on my phone. Look at your phone life. So that, that you don't have money, or that your life is not so okay, it's not the devil, it is you. What you see in the mirror is the enemy. Somebody say, I've, I've, I've not grown. I tell people, you have graduated eight years ago, you have not added anything to your degree. No certification. Even they are doing free on Udemy. Nothing. 
and you want to practice, and you want to be on the cutting edge. Say, there's no time. That's what we see. Now, how do you become a good steward of your life? Because like I said, life is not video game. You know video game, when the life finishes, you can shut it down and then they will reload life for you. They don't reload life here. If you die, that ending wants to run away. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand Yoruba, the Lord gives you understanding. For somebody who's very angry, so I will tell you, it means that um, we will meet at the feet of Christ where we will not part again. And we will see each other rejoice, uh, throw banters and hug each other. And Jesus will be the chairman of the occasion. That's what that song says. Very simple. But that's what it says. Now, how do you become a good steward of your life and time? Number one, take responsibility. The first step to changing anything is to take responsibility for it. The moment I began to take responsibility for my life, my life changed. I remember those days I used to do sabbaticals with the devil when I used to see And I used to say, it is those girls, it is those girls. The day I told myself, it is my fault. That was the last time it happened. When you keep blaming others, you don't change your life. Change begins by you taking responsibility. Stop blaming people for your outcomes. Take full responsibility. Change starts from taking responsibility. We are living in times that even church folks blame everything. We blame the government. What is the problem? Yes, of Nigeria, but you no, know, not of your life. In fact, the one of yes for Nigeria, you can even argue it. But not of your life. We blame government, we blame the devil. Lazy Christians blame the devil for everything. I hope you know. That's why prophetic nights are very few though. Blame the devil for everything. People have not read a book on finance and they are, are they entrepreneurs. They have not read a book on finance and they are starting a business. A book. No, no. It's not only ghost, column, and shape. It's not only spirit that will do everything. Else. That's not how to build. That's not how to do these things. Take responsibility. The problem is not your parents. It's not because your parents are poor. No, sir. You are not the only one that their parents will be poor. Glory to God. It's your life. You are not, they are not the reason for your bad habits and bad experiences. You are. And here is it. We all are going to be judged for how we use our resources. Don't be like the thought servants who eat all that he had. The truth is that we all have only 24 hours in a day. 24 hours in a day, we all have 12 months and we all have 365 days. What you do with that time will determine how your life will look like. Whether your life will be attractive. And whether people will like you. Now listen. Your life is primarily your responsibility. Newsflash. Your life is primarily your responsibility. Look at your neighbor and say, your life. You are not saying the way I like it. Don't worry. You are the one. You know, I've been preaching and you don't like it. Now you have an opportunity to preach. Right? So look at them in the face. With the anger you have been feeling since I've been telling you the truth. So tell them now. Say, your life is your responsibility. I see the way somebody said it. <laughs> Listen to this. I said this. And, and, and you need to note this. I believe responsibility does not start. You know, we talk about people being responsible. Ah, people think when you get married, that's when you become responsible. People say when you get married, you become responsible. Let me say this to you, all of us. I believe responsibility does not start when we start making money or paying bills. It starts when we take ownership of our life. Responsibility starts. When you take ownership of your life. It doesn't start when you start making money. No, that's not where responsibility starts. It starts when you say, this is my life. I do with it whatever I will. Number two, you must plan, prioritize, and set goals. Luke chapter 13, verse 32. They told Jesus that, that Herod was looking for him. He said, go tell that fox. Today, I cast out devils. Tomorrow, I do signs. And the next day, I will. You see, he gave him, he gave him a full agenda, a full plan. Of what he's going to live. Of how he's going to live his life. Let me say this to you. In 24 hours, if you set out to achieve nothing, you will achieve nothing. In 24 hours, if you set out to achieve nothing, you are going to achieve what? Nothing. 
Stop living your life to chance. Be deliberate and intentional. Can I ask you, what do you want to achieve today? What do you want to achieve tomorrow? What do you want to achieve this year? How many hours of studying and improving yourself do you need? When do you want to get that certification? When do you want to get married? When you, you start doing things that align with your purpose and your destiny, what will you do about your ministry? When will you start? Planning your day will help you avoid wasting your time and your resources. There are so many free resources out there on our phone. Monthly planners, um, your phone has alarm, um, that reminders that can help you to plan your life and can make you get better. Dear friends, many things in life are not luck. They are planned. Look at your neighbor and say, many things in life are not, are not luck. They are planned. Intentional. You have to be intentional. And I, I want to say this to you. If you don't plan your life, someone else will do it for you. If you don't plan it, someone else will love you so much that they will plan it for you. Love you so much, they will plan it for you. Another one, make plan and work the plan so that you can become all that God has called you to. Some of us have plans. Since 19, in the 90s, you have been having plans. Since the 90s. But the problem is not plan. The problem is that you are not working it. Are you following what I'm saying? You need to work your plans. People don't just wake up suddenly as tech prenups. They don't just wake up as word evangelists. People don't just wake up luckily rich. <laughs> you like that word? Don't wake up luckily rich. No. People plan their lives. There are no lucky tech engineers. There are no lucky doctors. They are no lucky accountants. They plan their lives. I know a lady who did uh, microbiology in school. When she finished, I asked her, how many industry and chemist places did you go? How many food industries are there? I said, how will you work? Where will you work? Today, she's on the last stage of ICANN. Started from the beginning. She's on the last stage of ICANN. It is not what life throws at you. It is what you do with it. When you take responsibility and you have a plan and you start working your plan, you will make it. I know engineers who are accountants today. It's what they determined and what they said they were going to do. That is not how to live your life. Suggestions very quickly about this. Use the calendar and your phone to daily plan your day and your months. Your phone is not for TikTok. Hello? Look at me. Your phone is not just for Instagram. <laughs> it's not for WhatsApp. And it's not for checking status. That thing you carry around has a brain of itself. You don't have to remember things. It can help you. That's why it's called a smartphone. If you don't need it, then go and get a Nokia 310 and save some money. Sweetheart, use your phone well. Somebody say, I, I, I normally wake up at that time. That, my, my prayer time, I wake up 5 o'clock. How many times have you missed it this week? Let that phone wake you up. Let that alarm ring. Have a daily to-do list. Don't just wake up and stand up and start running things. Write it down. Write five things I want to achieve today. And start eating the frog. That's what it's called. Cut away from things that waste your time. All this talking with them girls and them guys. Four hours. Every day consistently. That's why you are tired. That is why you don't have sleeping time. Align your life with your purpose. Number three, use your life to do the will of God. Paul said it, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 16. Say, redeeming the time. Use your time for the will of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. He said, I have come as it has written of me in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. Best way of using your life is to use your life for the will of God. At the end of your life, you will not regret the money you did not make. You will regret the resource you did not use. You will regret the time you did not spend with family. You will regret at the end of your life, time 
that you did not spend on polishing your talent and making impact in the world. Use your life for making impact. You are bigger than just nine to five. You are more than just making money. Somebody say, I just want to make money. The making money must be, there must be an hand to it, to a purpose to making money. Why do you want to make money? I hope that in your pursuit of money and wealth, you are not neglecting your purpose. The question that should be in your mind is, every time you are using time, is this the best use of my time now? Is this the best use of my time now? You are watching a movie? Ask yourself. You are rolling on the bed. Sleep is not coming. Ask yourself. Is this the best use of my time now? And my life now? Jesus dedicated his life to doing the will of God. See, I've come as reason of me in the volume of the book. To do your will. If your life, if the purpose of your life is to have a recording label, if it's to preach, to own a school, to minister to the poor, to sing, to finance the kingdom, to manage things, uh, to design, to create, this is the time to do them. Start working on becoming God's mind for your life. Start putting in the time, the effort, uh, the thing now. Start doing it now. Start doing it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Start now. Look at him and say, start now. Oh, you, you're not saying it well. It's because you are not even convinced you are going to start now yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, start now. Your purpose is important. Your destiny is important. Your life is important. Start doing it now. Next, number, what, okay, where am I now? Number four, have a good work ethic. Go quickly to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and then verse 10. Have a good work ethics. Very important. Whatever your hands finds to do, scripture says, do it with your might. For there's no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Whatever your hands find to do, say, do it well. You must have a good work ethic. It's important that every aspect of our life works, especially our work. You should not be the most lazy staff in your workplace. You should not be the most distracted staff in your workplace. That's not how to grow. We must have a good life ex work ethic. Listen to this. Many people are poor, not because of the devil. <laughs> you see, every time I'm trying to tell you that the devil is not that powerful, right? You see, many people are poor not because of the devil. They are poor because of laziness. There is wealth in the feed of the laboring man, of, of the poor man. That's what scripture says. The hand of the poor, the hand of the lazy leads to poverty. The hand of the hardworking leads to wealth. That's what Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4 says. Give your best in your workplace. Do it appropriately. Do every job that someone cannot do it better. Don't wait for your big break because some people are keeping their efforts for the next good job. <laughs> Where is it? This workplace. If you know how much they are paying me. Listen, I know, I, I know what it means to hand little or close to nothing. And I've been there. I've done it for many years. And I knew, I mean, sometimes I tell them, I say, uh -uh, I have, I have used, I have, I, your money has finished. I mean, I tell them that their money has finished. I'll be, of course, uh -uh, how can I be working this month? But you see, everything you do in life is a sin. Including your work. One day, the harvest is coming. Do everything. Oh, you are not the owner of that workplace, but do it like it's your own. You are not the owner of that company, but work like it is your company. Because one day you will employ people. And the same acts that you, the same seed you have sown, somebody's going to also give their heart for you. That's why. Again, by you working where God opened new doors for you. Get to work on time. Stop giving excuses. It's the traffic. The traffic. Get to work on time. Stop arguing with your boss. Give every task your best shot. Stop grumbling or complaining. Do your work with utmost dedication and joy. Is that what you want us to? Hallelujah. 
you be that staff that whistles around the office. Be that staff that when it comes, everybody is happy. You know, there are people when they even come to church, everybody is happy. Because they know oh, these are good guy. But there are people when you see them, you're already thinking, how will I manage this person for your long? You see, there are people we have worked with that I was their boss, but to go and talk to them, I will first of all have to say some prayers. For them to do something that they have been paid for, I would have to, I would not sit down by them and say, how far are we eating? First of all, start by scoping them and all of that. They are our staff, but they are our God. Do you think now if I have a better opportunity, I will go and call them? It's, you see, that's not the devil. It's their attitude. Many people are stuck in life because of their attitude. In fact, many people are not married because of their attitude. Thank God for the opportunity to work in your presentness. But do it well so that that thing will open the door for the next level. Somebody can be a friend, front desk officer somewhere and somebody say, you do it well. I remember I had that story, Pastor Kojo, he said, and, and she saw, he saw somebody walking in church. He said, who is that lady? Walking so, ah, who is that? He said, ah, no, that's, that's a big woman. You don't forget her dedication. That's the way she's happy and she's always working. Pastor Kojo said, no, I want her on the staff of Congress. You can't get her. She's a big lady in the financial institution. She's a big lady. How much are they paying her? Find out. Top it up and give her a brand new car. I want her. No interview. The interview was somebody is watching you. Somebody is looking at you. No, no, don't, don't do well so that you can get a husband. No, that's what I'm saying here. Don't do well so that you can get a wife. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying that somebody is watching you. Somebody is looking at you. It's important how you live your life. You see, when a man is ready, he won't now say, I, I, I've not started watching you now. No. They are looking at the way you dress, the way you carry yourself, your composure, your posture. They are looking at how you look at life. Everybody is interested in being a friend with a diligent man. Everybody. Number five, how do you manage your life well? So that people, you see, when you hear that some people die, it's not that the devil killed them in their dream. You are not getting what I'm saying. It's because they ate themselves to death. Some people drank themselves to death. You alone, I open your fridge and freezer. It's like, it's a sugar depot. And you are taking it. Say, you know what? We need a boss of energy. We need a boss of energy. We need a boss of energy. Oh, God, you need to sleep. That thing inside of you, it's going to cause commotion. You see, we must understand that there's a difference between working hard and having a, t- a tedious job. When you work out on a table, it's your brain. So that your body is not, metabolism is not actually burning sugar as it ought to. But your brain is actually burning sugar. But you are not moving your muscles. You are not moving every part. It's different from you working out on a farm like our fathers were. That's why they can finish a bowl of open food. Finish it and sleep. Because tomorrow morning, they are going. Many of us cannot last. Yeah, I know. Me, I, okay, for instance, I can't last 15 minutes here. So that will make you very comfortable. I can't last 15 minutes. What? I can't work out last. What am I? You will see my hand. Blisters will come out now. And I, I can't do that. But you can't do that. And you are eating the way you are eating. And you don't do any exercise. I feel like singing. You see, there are songs that just make it make sense. Because you see, you see, what you are fighting, it's not really the devil, it is you. You are not a good manager of your life. Look at how much they pay you every month. How much they pay you every month. And see how your bills are, your bills. You earn 40,000, you still want to, you still want to go and make buy hair. Who is supposed to cut the hair than you? There are things that we need to start telling ourselves. Plan your life. Number five, remove distractions. There are are so many things that can waste our time. Some of them are bad. Why some of them are good? But they can waste your time. Do you know that watching instructive videos is a good thing? But it can be a time waster. And it can actually be bad. 
if it is eating to your time of with God. Your time you're supposed to be praying. That's when you listen to music. I just, just like song. Just like song. They still got time. I listen to worship for two hours. You don't know, but you're a lazy person. Lazy person. Are you the one that sang this song? You are following, do you see? Open up. And I love my spirit. Open up, Kalabosh. And then you still, you watch me. You still have 22 hours with God. You spend shishi with time. Shishi with God. You didn't do anything with God. There is a time to stop your music. Especially you people who like songs. Quiet people. They, they will not be listening to songs. They don't pray. They will not be listening to music. They are spending time with God. No time to read the Bible. They are just owning it. Song, song, song. No way. That's not how it works. Keep that phone. Silence the thing. Charge your phone in another room. Be praying in another room. If you know that you are addicted to your phone. Put your phone on airplane mode. You should not be available to for self. Even the president is not. You are not that important. A phone call from a good friend can read you of your time of studying and improving or self-improving. Because you can be on that phone for two hours. See how that my friend come you from there are people that call me. I don't pick them. Because if I pick their call, two hours. Now, we will talk and we talk sense. We talk sense and they are beneficial for my ministry. For me, only be because this is the time to study. No way. I won't do that. I will So all of you, some people will call you. They are distractions. That's how your 24 hours go. That's why I don't like chatting. I don't like it. Because chatting wastes time. The conversation you can have in two minutes. You are, first of all, you say, hello, how are you doing? The, the person reply in two minutes. You reply again. And then everybody keeps going. But if I call you, how are you doing? <laughs> this is what I want you to do. I call the phone. Two minutes, we are done. But Generation Z don't want to. They don't even want you to call them. But they will not pick it. They want to chat. And they will now say they are tired. They can't sleep. How will you sleep when you look at a phone for 14 hours? I was telling a young man, I said, my phone time is five hours. It's too much. He looked at me there. Like, it's not seen. I said, how many lanes? People do 13 hours on a daily basis. Except they are paying you on that phone. Can we take a moment to think, what is my greatest distraction? Look at your desk. The goals you have set, it's been years. It's not too difficult it's because there are too many distractions. What is your greatest distraction? Music? Ladies? Sex? Drinking? Because you know when you drink a lot, it has a way of shutting down your brain. Drinking? <laughs> what exactly is your distraction? Light it down. And do something about it. Number six, have a good work-life balance. Have a good work-life balance. I want to suggest you to read the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a very good book full of wisdom. He said everything in life is not that, it's not that important. There are things that are more important than your work. Can I shock you? That there are things more important than your work. Number one, your health. Sick people don't go to work. Your family is more important than your work. Because the day something happens to you, I've been there. You see, that's why I can't speak. I can't be there. I became a potato overnight. I can count how many judgment members came, but this woman was there. Family. She was there. She was there. You see, when the way you live life, it tells me you don't even understand life. That's why you have been in Lagos. You have not called your family in one month. If anything happens to you, that's when you will know they are important. Spend time with family and friends. Have fun. You only came this road once. 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 Enjoy your life. You don't like your work, you are there. You don't like your office space, you are there. You don't like your accommodation, you are there. Everything around you makes you sad. I'm, I know people. See, have fun. 
One day, just look at the money. It's not going to even be enough. Abi, five shower two thousand. Since all these days, you have been passing that guy that is doing this year. If you tell yourself, I will buy this year, I will buy this year. If you tell yourself, I will buy this year, I will buy this year. Park and buy. Don't buy, buy. If you buy it and you have to trek home, trek home, but hit that year. Eat it. I'm telling you. I told my wife, I said, there are things we must eat here. Because I can't guarantee that we'll find it in heaven. I didn't find Shahama in heaven. I didn't find Suya in heaven. And they should not be killing animals in heaven. So you might not see Suya. Because animal has to die before Suya comes out. So eat it here. Eat it. Say, hey, my money is not enough. So you, you, you are saving money. Piggy first, as full your money. And hunger is killing you. And the money is in Piggy first. If you die, Piggy first to go. Because your family does not even know that you have money in Piggy first. I love you too. You see, your family don't know. So you are you some of you, some of those people are rich. Some financial institutions are so rich because they are when their auditors look at the account after like 10 years, they see some stale accounts. Nobody, they'll just play it off. You are so secretive. Your money, you don't even tell anybody. You don't have anybody you trust in this life. Nobody, so all the money you have been saving is on banks. Nobody has your ATM, nobody knows that there's money there. Let me tell you this. You are going to make MDs of banks rich. It is your little 2,000, 5,000, 50,000, 2,200K, 1 million that they are using to employ your people coming after you. Tell people where your money is. You can't get it. Where that I have money. How oh, my banks? People know. Some of you, you, can, you don't even know how many banks you have because you have open CUDA, especially with all this financial, FEFB. You have open everywhere. Oh, pay, pam, pay. Everything is pay, pay, pay. I am telling. <laughs> and listen. Listen to what Solomon said. He said, Exodus chapter 5, 18 to 20. He said, here is what I have seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of his labor in which he toys under the sun all the days of his life which God gives him. For it is his heritage. It is his heritage. You also, 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 every money you have, you are keeping it so that you can go to another accommodation. So the money is also for another landlord. You, you just leave. You have been working for three years now to even buy shoes problem. Oh, you to And you trek, trek one day, trek two days, at least buy the shoes. Save the money and buy the, do the thing. He said, a man should heat of his labor. You know, some people are so stingy that they are even stingy on themselves. Nobody, no young lady has come to me and say, I'm thinking of buying a car. And I'll now say, when you get married, when you buy a car, people will not want to marry you. Let them go. In fact, I don't want those kind of people around you in the name of Jesus. Buy the car. Buy it now. Enter it. Yes, on your head. You did not see the money. It's your money. Abba. Abba. I'm not saying you don't save all. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? But you look, look at Suya 1-5. Buy it, take it home. Take Suya and see. Drink it and sleep. Eh? You get to work next day, say, oh, what you say? I'm fine. I'm fine. The one you have been saving, saving this life. Oh, no. How can you be working for people? You are working for your boss. You are working for the conductor. Because those are people you pay half of the money to, the drivers. You, you yourself, what is your enjoyment in your toy? He said it. He said it is good for a man. That means it must be bad for a man. Too bad, James, I took the waste. If you don't eat what you have worked for, it's a problem. I told my wife, I said, I will not advise you again. Some month, buy bag. Some month, buy shoe. Some month, buy dress. Don't buy, oh, buy. Buy your money. They will send you. Because when you see that now, what is this? I understand this thing. See the way you have been working all these days. You are sad every time. Every time. Every time. Some of you earn 40k. You, you distribute it. 10k goes to mommy. 10k goes to daddy. 15k goes to your sister in school. She will not finish school. She will not remember you. You will not be angry. Is it her fault? 
He also have a life now. It's you that you know wise. You should have caught the 15 to 10 and use that 5K to sponsor yourself too. People are not going to feed your future. I'm sponsoring. That's why some men are saying, I'm sending a girl to school. She's not finished school. You are now removing her clothes in public. Don't try that thing. That's nonsense. It's you that decide you want to invest. And it's not all investment that you need. Am I preaching good? Whatever you do in life, don't lose your family. Whatever you do in life, don't lose your family. Whatever. Have time for your family. Don't neglect your spouse and your children. Whatever. I can give you scripture as well. Let's go to number seven. Prioritize rest. Now, let's go to the Old Testament. I intentionally said it. Let's go to the Old Testament. Because some people say they don't read the Old Testament. Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go to Exodus 31, 15. Because when we talk about rest, people don't understand it. Exodus 31 and verse 15. The Bible says, work shall be done. Look at it. It didn't say work may be done. It said work shall be done for six days. But the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. You know why they are saying that? Before he kills himself, let us kill him. <laughs> you get, you don't want to rest. You will kill yourself. So before that, help us kill him. <laughs> now, go back 34. 34, 21. No, no, no. 34 now. 34 and then 21. Exodus 34. And then, 30, and then 21. Do you understand? Yeah. Since this, you shall work, but on the seventh day, you shall rest. In employing time and in harvest, you shall rest. Sabbath is nothing but rest. Do you know that six days the Lord created the what? The heavens and the house. And the seventh day he rested. Can I ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen? Did God rest because he was tired? Do we agree with that answer? That God did not rest because he was tired? God rested to show us a pattern. That for you to be creative and productive on the earth, you need to have a day of rest. It's a pattern. That is how the word I create must function. That rest is important. Can I say to somebody today, that rest is not against wealth production. Rest actually aids wealth production. When you employ a tech guy to work in your company, they give you the best in two years. Because everything they know, they will bring it to your God. After two years, most of them won't give you anything noticeably different because they don't sleep. And so their creativity is reduced. When people don't rest, they make irrational decisions. When people don't sleep, they do things they are not supposed to do. Our generation has made a god of busyness. And I'll keep saying it until we hear it. You must rest. Now let me say this to you because many of us do it. You work so hard during the day. Your brain brain working all day. Like say, you know, be man made. That's how you have been working. All day. Your brain, that's how it works. You sit down. And then when it is 11, you now shut down your system. You know, you don't shut down your system. Say now, I'm tired. You now on TV. Now go to Netflix. I say, I just want to cruise. I'm just tired. This is how to, this is how I rest. Oh, see, so unwind. They will now watch movie to 1 a.m. Let me say this to you. The rest you need is not movie. It's sleep. Unwinding is sleep. I want the people to fall in love with sleeping again. You need to embrace it. If I call you and say, what are you doing? You are sleeping. I've never been sleeping before that. Also, okay. Because people cannot even sleep again in this generation. That's why it's a angry generation. People are very angry. That's you see people any you say one thing. Are you going to me? No, 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 no. You chat with some people the way they reply. I'm going to fight has started. Because it's not your but because the way their mind is, they are not sleeping. So they are mentally not stable. Any one of you here that don't do four hours of sleep on a daily basis, you are not mentally stable. 
So that I know they want to look at me, so they let go back. At least you need six to seven hours of sleep for proper bodily function. There's no max, so <laughs> yeah. Because if she says, and you come in one minute, she's gone. But me, I have prayed, lay hands on myself, I will be there. I'll be there. Because you see, our mind is too busy to enter a place of rest. That's the problem. You're, as you are sleeping, your mind is thinking, ah, that project. That's when someone says, that's when I receive an idea. You now stand up. The problem is that the devil is with you. I remember when I was not sleeping. And that was what led to my crash. So I tell people when they say, you know, you know, some people come here and they tell me, and then I slept very late. And they are looking like I should give them trophy. I've been there, I've done it. What is it? Well, I could last man, you kill yourself. I'm telling you, there's nothing. I'm telling you this thing. It's not that. This is not cause. This is what is going to happen. That's the truth. There are diseases that will come because your antibody, antibody system is all, you are, you are tired always. And then you are not making unwise decisions. That's why you want to get married. That's why you are hating that girl. That's your yawo. You are hating her because she did something because your mind is not okay. Tell your neighbor, sleep. God slept. You can't be more spiritual than God. Can I say somebody, news flash? Tell your neighbor, news flash. Ozu does not lead to wealth. A Osla walks to 47, 365. And you will see that they don't really have it. They see from mouth to head. Why? Because for you to accumulate wealth, there is a mental condition that is necessary for you to breathe. You need to take a point of rest. And I'll say this to you. The Jewish people are one of the richest tribes in the world today. In the world today, if they are not the richest tribe in the world today, the Jewish people, they still keep the Sabbath of rest. Seventh day, they don't work. When they have store, they don't open it. They have restaurant, they don't open it. On the seventh day, they rest. And they are richer than most of us. If not all, all of us are not are the richest tribe. They are following a pattern. Rest is important. Rest is important. Look at him and say, rest is important. Some of you come to church with heavy eyes. Half sleeping, half awake. Is that how you go to church or school or office on Monday? You can't make good decisions like that. Sleep. Drop your phone and sleep. Drop your phone. Are you doing status one day? Some people will be saying, so that people will be saying, is there anybody awake? Ah, what is the meaning of that? Do we want to start a society of night crawlers? Are we witches? Jesus said there are 12 hours to work in it. Did he say 24 hours to work in it? Eh? He called the day. He called the greater light. He, said, he called it day. The lesser night. I tell people, pray. If you can't pray at night, you will make it. Pray! All those, all those theology they are teaching you that is nonsense based. Just pray! Is God more alive in the night or awake in the night? Pray! If it is true that you can pray where? Well, instead of this sleep, pray, sleep, pray, those pray that you are doing. If it is 2 p.m. that you are acting, look at God and pray at 2 p.m. He will answer you. The same God at 2 p.m. is the same God at 2 a.m. Deliver yourself. Deliver. Look at you. Deliver yourself. If I set myself on fire, witches can come to a.m. They can't get me. Because when like they, they quench the fire at 2 a.m. There, you know, 2M is when the witches are asked. What's my own about when they are asked? You see, there are no sense that they teach you that they don't, they don't say scriptures for it. Where is the scripture that witches have a time where they meet? How many people have died 2M? Are people not driving on the road and they are killed? What are you saying? Ignorance has filled the atmosphere and people can just say jargons and stand, make it loud and people be listening to them. Stand on scriptures. If it is you are a night person, pray at night. But if you are not a night person and you are a day person, would you okay? Would Jesus? Tadura, pray. Hey, mama, I want to wait tonight. They say we should. Some people set alarm one year. That one day, they say, I'm a fire cow. The devil has gotten you already. Better know. 
finally, the Bible says that you should review your day. Review your life. Listen, you don't need an auditor to audit your life. Right now, you should be able to audit your life. This is how far I've gone. This is where I expect to have been. What am I doing wrong? Audit your life. Young man, audit your life. I still do an audit on my life. I do auditing on my day every day. Reviewing the day. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 10 that God saw that it was good. How will God see that it was good? Because he reviewed it. You don't have to wait till the end of the month to review. Review every day. If you can change what you do in every day, your month will change. If you change what you do every day, your year will change. Your life will change. So look at what you do every day. How many hours you spend just reading sports news? Or Twitter? For those of you who don't know how to use Twitter, I want to encourage you not to learn it. That thing is very addictive. If you don't know how to use it, just stay where you are. Especially when you are now looking for followers on Twitter. Ah, you will stay there. When you look at the creation story, you will notice that God will take time each day to review his work. Each day. He looked at what he had created and saw that it was good. Reviewing is intended to help you grow. You see, the problem with our life is that we don't review because we are so busy. You know that it's like we don't even catch our breath. Do you know it's like, look at you, you are so busy now. You know when I look at Tony and he's so busy, Desmond, very busy, she'll go very busy. I look at them and say, they are not married. Yet. Mommy, when they are married, they come with children. You will now see that you are not busy now. That now is a play. I'm trying to say news flash, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. If you decide you won't marry, people will come down and sit down with you also and be using your time. It doesn't get better. The more you grow, the more difficult it gets. But you must catch your breath to review. How far have I gone? What am I doing? The Bible says when they went and found a wife for Isaac, that Isaac was at a place of his meditation when he saw that they were bringing. That means the man had a place he goes to for meditating. To take a break every day. Listen, I, th- I think, I, I don't know which pastor that said it, like he has a chair that when he sits on that chair, nobody talks to him because they know he's meditating. So he goes to that chair and sits and he shuts down every distraction. Sometimes you may need to off the light and put your phone in another room and just think. 8 p.m. when I woke up, I said I was going to read the diary. Even if you read, what were the points? Can I still remember them? Can I recall what are the principles I learned today? Can I recall what bad decisions did I make today? Can I recall? That's how to review your day. If you don't review your day, your life won't get better. And you are a bad steward of life and time. So that you will suddenly discover you have used 40 years. And you have not started. If somebody wants to get married at the age of 30, I tell people, any guy wants to get married at the age of 30, I will know by 25. The decisions. I remember one time one guy came to me and said, I want to get my idea of this year. I laughed. I almost fell down. Uh, you think people don't pick it like this? This is not like going to Blanco now. I say, I thought you know me. You want to worry. And you are, <laughs> I look at his life. You've not been doing an auditing. Or you are not truthful to yourself. If not, you should know. You, the way I'm looking at you, if you say that, I want to get my next five years, not end of this year. Did I do the important things for the day? How long did it take me to accomplish the item I want to achieve? Did I make any progress today? What can I do better tomorrow? That's how you reveal. Did I eat well? Did I eat with the future in mind? <laughs> did I eat well? Did I eat with the future in mind? In the morning, you know what you took? You took bread. In the afternoon, you took conflicts. And at night, you order chawama. You are not eating with your future in mind. You know, I don't cook. I'm too busy to cook. Chef will kill you in Lagos. Because it is sugar and maggi that they are eating. Because you won't buy it if it's not sweet. So they will, I, I saw them cooking one rice. I told myself I will never 
Why I from that person again in the learning? Ah, they have killed us. So that you will say you are running from sugar because of diabetes, and the food you are eating is giving you diabetes. I told a young man, say, I don't cook. I said, you will start cooking. When you know me, you will start cooking. You start cooking. You, I don't have time. What is it? Are you cooking more than rice? 30 minutes, 50 minutes. You can even be pressing for cooking it. Who can eat? And be alive. Eat with your future in mind. Look at him and say, eat with your future in mind. I learned this from my father in the Lord of Rain Church. He had a crisis when he was 40. And he was knocked out for almost three months. He couldn't do any ministry work. And then he looked at me and said, ah! He said, I went from a size 16 shirt and I went to a size 22 because the Lord had blessed me. You know, there is a time when pastors fast. You see, this is my nature. I'm fresher than this. Oh, I Do you understand? It's fast. I'm fresher than this. If you have seen yesterday and today, you see that there's even a difference. Yesterday, I look like a street boy. I can switch watch almost any day. If I come to church like that, you will not even listen to my sermon. I'm telling you. I had to clean up. So I appear for our market today, which is a Sunday. Glory to God. <laughs> he went to a size 22. The left. He told me. He said, I ate myself to death. Do you know what my God does? After every Sunday, when he has finished preaching, lay hands. Glory to God. He goes home and they pan the arm for pan the arm with a pack of half life. And he zooms it. Now, because he doesn't sleep Saturday to Sunday. So when he hits that like that, he just turns around from where he is. You don't know him. I know he's here. He just he hits like he's like, and immediately he just finishes like this. He carries his leg on the chair and then stone. When he turns like that, he's gone. He was killing himself. He now told me. He said, I went to Ipiti after my crisis. And I saw one of my pastors. He said, the man was also doing what Baba was doing. <laughs> Pade jam and Papa life. He said, he looked at you. He said, I said, Baba, that's how you eat it. He said, and did you not know I finished my life? If not for God? You know, our generation wants to learn by experience. You know what I'm saying, Padre Diam, because people are, you can't even relate because you are in Lagos. It's the food that you're going You eat that kind of food and you sleep. Be careful. Eat with your future in mind. Did I do everything as unto God or as unto man? How I review my day again is I ask myself if God should play my life in screen in ransom down. Will I run out and never come back? Or will I say it should play it? Did you get what I just said? Should I say it again? If the Lord plays my life on the screen in ransom house and everybody is seeing it, will I say thank you as your pastor and never come back? I live a pure, a consecrated, and a holy life. And it's important to do the same. Because this life is not your home. We sing it. This life is not my home. I am just passing through. Uh -huh. See, me, I feel at home in this world. So that's why I'm not going to finish it. Uh -huh. You understand that? I feel, I feel very at home. Glory to God. <laughs> but I'm trying to say to you that your life is your responsibility. I preach to you on that sermon. Are you a good steward of your life and time? Bow down your head, bow down your heart. And some of us need to repent. Repentance does not mean that you have sinned. It just means that I've looked at my life again. Remember what I said, how do you feel your 24 hours? I begin to say, Lord, I'll do better. Lord, I'll do better. Lord, I'll do better. What can you do better? Begin to talk to God. Begin to speak to God. Begin to, begin to speak to God. It's the fountain of your life. It's the source of life. He trusted you so much. He gave you a life to manage it for yourself. Talk to him and say, God, help me. Kabi help me. Help me to do better. 
Help me to be better at it. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. Help me. Help me. To live my life with the future in mind. To live my life with purpose in mind. To make decisions that affect my purpose and my destiny. I, I don't want to come to the end of my life and they will say he wasted his life. You remember that story I said? I don't want them to say he wasted his life. I want them to say, I want them to say he fully utilized his life. Lord help me. To be a good steward of my life and of my time. To use all you have given me for your glory. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. All let bow. All eyes closed. You are born again on that side of my voice. If Jesus comes now, you know, you will make heaven. You've given him your life already. Can you raise your right hand up to God? Only those people. Nobody looking around. Only those people. Raise your right hand up to God. I know. I know I'll make heaven. I know he has called me. I know. Raise your right hand up to God. If your hand is not raised, it means one or two things. It's either you are not sure or you are not born again. I want to give you an opportunity today to give your life to Jesus. You are saying, you know what, brother? I want to be that today to be that day where I follow Jesus. Can you put your hand on your chest? I'd like to pray with you. Whatever you are, you want to commit to Jesus. Put your hand on your chest. The Lord bless you, sister. Lord bless you. Put your hand on your chest. God bless you, my brother. Put your hand on your chest. Do it well. Do it properly. Put your hand on your chest and say, God, let today be that day. Let today be that day. Father, thank you. Thank you for these people. Thank you, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord Jesus. Can the whole church say this prayer after me? Thank you, Jesus, for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I believe and I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I open the door of my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And make this old. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching, or for counseling, or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.